Wildcat Agents. It's Tristan and Kevin. And today we've got Michael Mayer on with us for Random Acts of Coaching. And there is nothing random about this. That's right. It's just a sexy name. That's all. Right, Michael? <laughs> it's all good. It's the big sexy. I like it. That's right. That's right. I like and, it. And today we're going to be talking about how to really go into your database and pick those people that are going to make you that real estate agent that you want to be, you know, that level up double time, triple quadruple, because I mean, until I read the title, I was like, what does Michael mean? And then I'm like, Oh, connectors. Those are the people that make it happen for us. That's exactly right. So Michael, dude, take it over. Cause I know Kevin's got a lot of questions. Yeah. Okay. All right. And you're, you guys are okay. If I share the screen, right? Go ahead, buddy. Take it over. All right. All right. You were in the Dominican uh, playing baseball, right? Yeah. So we had a humanitarian baseball trip to the Dominican Republic. So we went down and played seven games in seven days. And then we visited two orphanages and held a, we conducted a baseball clinic. And then at one of those clinics, we actually conducted it with the Kansas City Royals staff that were down in the Dominican to also run that clinic. And then uh, we, uh, we played seven games. We ended up like uh, two, four, and one. I mean, we played some, some legit teams. And, uh, it, uh, but, you know, it wasn't about the wins and losses or the ties. It was, uh, it was about delivering over 3,000 pounds of baseball equipment to the Dominican Republic. And you would have thought that we, you know, we were delivering food for months. They were, they were so thrilled to get this baseball equipment. And it was obvious from going through the parks that uh, they needed this equipment. I was telling Tristan the story earlier about, you know, one of the kids was running the bases and it, the, the, the shoe was cut in half. So when he was running the bases, you could see the bottom of his foot uh, as he was running around. And we gave away over 300 pairs of, of shoes uh, to the teams that we played against. So we played. And then at the end, we brought out the bags of equipment and the coach you know, and the kids would, would hand out that equipment. Uh, and in the process, we also got to paint a house uh, in one of the poorer districts of Santo Domingo, which is saying something because it's all pretty poor. Uh, we painted a house that was 10 foot by 12 foot. Uh, it was wow. basically what you or I would call a, a shack or a shed. And uh, a, a single mom with two kids lived there. And we painted it on Monday, which was Mother's Day in uh, in the Dominican Republic. So for Mother's Day, we, we painted her house and painted her windows and painted the whole thing. And between the 20 of us, it took us like an hour to paint the whole house. So it was a great trip. It's Gen Gen, right? It's a generosity generation. And uh, it was a great lesson for the kids, great lesson for the adults. And also we got to play uh, a lot of baseball. So it was, it was a great mix. Uh, good time. So Sounds awesome. Good stuff. I love it, man. So we're going to jump right into today. This is the random acts of coaching. And as we know, there's no such thing as random with these presentations. Uh, Everybody is, all the coaches are spending a lot of time uh, and dedicating a lot of uh, energy into producing all these. Uh, But I also came up with an acronym for, for random. And I truly believe that referrals are normally dominant over marketing. Now I mean, normally dominant, right? Marketing is powerful, but also referral word of mouth, marketing, if you will, referrals and repeat generation is uh, where it's at, right? This is the, the early goal should be maybe marketing or, or calling for expireds and FISBOs. But uh, the, the bottom line is, is what bucket are you put, putting them into uh, after you're done? And today, what we're going to talk about is operation database upgrade. And operation database upgrade is that, listen, we need to be bringing better people into our database. What we have discovered is that some people are going to be very good at referring. There are others that you can build the best relationship in the world with. You can love on them. You can spend money on them. You can get them to events and they will never refer you. They're just not pre-inclined to refer you. But there are other people who are pre-inclined or or. Uh, have this this natural affinity to referring other people. And those are the people that we want to network with. The more of these people 
who are more inclined to refer you, of course, the more referrals you are going to get. So what I'm going to show you today is how do we filter out all the people who won't refer you and how do we filter in the people who will connect, introduce, and refer you in some cases before they even really get to know you well. And in some cases, what I'm going to show you today is that is the reason why a past client or current client will probably not be your best referral source. I'm going to show you today how to develop relationships who will be great referral sources for you before they've even had any experience with your services. They've had experience with you and that's enough for them to start refu uh, to refer. So as always with this, I am going to attack dogma. I'm going to be talking about things that they don't like we, us talking about in the real estate world. You know, viewer discretion is advice, right? Put your safety goggles on because it's about to get crazy. And I don't want you throwing anything at Tristan or me or Kevin. Uh, and Kevin, I want to welcome you to the, uh, to the, the table today. Um, you're not Nick Baldwin. And that's awesome. I'm just uh -huh. kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, Nick. Uh, enjoy your enjoy your new home in Michigan. Best of luck up there. And uh, it's going to be an exciting time for Nick Baldwin over the next year. So, uh, Kevin, but welcome to the show. Kevin is a, a, a big time boutique agent out of uh, San Clemente and also the San Francisco area. So make sure you send all your referrals out there. He's also the COO of Lab Coat Agents and the lab coat enterprise and the lab coat media uh, enterprise, you know, which is right there with Disney as one of the largest in the world as or fastest growing one of the two. <laughs> so rock and roll baby. Here's the other thing on this is, is no freaking lab rats. Right. And, and I, you know what I've actually noticed on lab coat agents recently that we've cleaned it up a little bit. And I want you to know the bullies have been uh, run out of town and the lab rats have been run out of town. And I have to tell you that, you know what, it's a better environment inside of lab code agents. And uh, I appreciate Tristan and Kevin and the all the moderators uh, for making that possible. It's, it's been great. So thanks, man. You We're know, trying. We're no trying. lab rats. Be a catalyst. Now, quickly here, just for those of you that uh, are interested in where I'm at, uh, kind of like a where's Waldo here. Next week, I'll be in the Mastermind Summit with uh, 2,000 other crazy people um, at mastermindsummit.com. That's in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's going to be a, a phenomenal event. Uh, Tristan actually was on a panel uh, last year at that event on events and did a very good job and spoke in front of, what, 750 uh, yeah. people at that event. That was really and, fun, man. Yeah. And so I'm the celebrity MC. That's their title, not mine. Uh, celebrity MC, and I also have a keynote on Thursday morning. Uh, I speak uh, right before Jay Abraham. For those of you that don't know him, check him out online. And George W. Bush is uh, the keynote as uh, as well at that. So it'll be a good share the stage type of experience uh, awesome. for me at that. And then June 13th is the KW Pennsylvania Regional Mastermind. So if you're in the Pennsylvania uh, area, uh, please uh, check that out. And then June 21st is a big event. That's the rain event with me and Chris Smith. Uh, we're doing Gen Gen Tampa generosity generation event called the rain event. Check out the rain event.com. And then uh, July 9th, they will be in San Antonio, August 1st through the 4th. We have certified referral trainer. If you're interested in teaching someone L or you just love to speak, check out seven L teachers.com. And then the referral mastery summit is in Atlanta, Georgia. And that's the next couple of months. Love it, so That's today we're going to talk about fast referrals. Yeah, it's going to be busy, man. So in this series that I've been doing with LabCo, it's, it's been how to, you know, let's debunk the myths, right? Let's crush the myths and let's disclose the absolute truths about what really works when it comes to getting business. So I have a question for, for Tristan and Kevin here. So which would be better if I want to sell a lot of books? right? If I want to sell a lot of books, and, and I do, trust me, uh, check it out at the book on referrals.com. But I want to sell a lot of books. Is it better for me to have a list or a database of 20,000? Or is it better for me to have a database of one? Which, which, which would be better if I want to sell a lot of books? Well, bigger database, 
I mean, I at the end of the day, you want, you want just on that, on those, those two options, bigger database. Yeah. So maybe, right. So maybe it's the 20,000, but, but what's the caveat here? What's, what's the, if, what's the, well, if, if the one gives you more results, then that's more valuable than a $20,000 database that doesn't produce any results. Yeah. And, and so here's the question, right? What if the one is Oprah? <laughs> You had to bring Oprah into this. <laughs> I always do. Oprah is going to be a part of, of everything. Oprah is such a great model for the generosity generation. So she, she became very, very successful through listening to others and giving away great gifts, right? Which is, which is the generosity generation way. That's the, the 7L That's awesome. system, right? So here's the thing, right? It, is if it's Oprah, it's going to be far better to have Oprah in your database than it will be 20,000 of the typical people. Well, so bigger database equals bigger results is actually a myth, right? It's busted. It, it doesn't matter how many people you have. It doesn't matter. The truth is a better database will give you better results. Having better people in your database will give you better results. And that's what we're going to talk about today is you don't, if you don't, when you go to a networking event with 200 people, you do not listen to me, all of you that are going through all these trainings right now. You do not want 200 people in your database. You don't want to add all 200 people. You really want the four or five best people from that networking event or that networking group. So we want, we want to qualify them. How do we discover the four or five greatest people in a group of 200? Just like in lab coat, right? We have 80,000, but yeah. you know what? There are, uh, there are more influential, more connected, and more successful people in that group who are going to be able to achieve, help achieve the goals of lab code agents than maybe some of the others, right? There just are. So what we need to do is we need to filter out and figure out who these people are. But as far as your database and real estate and mortgages is this is a huge epiphany for me. When I first started in the business, I was adding everybody to my database. So the, the first year I had like 50 people in there and then, then I got like 250, and then it was like 1,000 people. Well, here's the thing. When you've got 50 people, it's really easy to spend 10 or $20 per person, right? Getting them magnets, getting them calendars, getting them gifts, whatever it may be. And then when you have 250, all of a, time, all of a sudden, your expenses are going to go up by five times. And then you go to 1,000 people in your database, and all of a sudden, you have to make some real decisions on, on, you know, sending them a calendar or a magnet or whatever you want to do. Well, as is typical, once you get to a bigger number, this voice in the back of your head kicks in. And the voice in the back of your head is your teacher from third grade who mm -hmm. said, hey, if you don't have enough for everyone, what do you not do? Don't give any away. Don't bring any at all. Well, that's exactly what we do with our database. Once it gets to a certain size, we stop doing anything for all of them because we can't do anything for all of them, right? We can't do the same thing for all of them. Well, what I discovered was the work of Professor Robin K. Dunbar out of the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. He has discovered that the size of our neocortex, the size of the, the part of our brain that makes us human, only allows us as humans to build 150 great relationships. So, so I don't have to worry about 1,000. I don't have to worry about 2,000. Or I don't have to worry about everybody. All I have to worry about is 150 people. So, so the first word of advice here is, is, is don't, don't, don't try to have these mega lists, mega database, numbers game, right? Build a 150 person community and, and make, if you pour into those 150 people, they will pour into you. They will reciprocate. And I will tell you that when I did that, I created a three ring binder. I wonder if I have that here. I created a three ring binder mm -hmm. and I picked out of the thousand who the 150 people were. That year, I went from 200 referrals the year before to over 500 referrals, and my 150 person community was over 80% of those 500 referrals. So pouring into a few gave me a lot more. And it was amazing 
how that, like my focus on just them, I could remember their birthdays. I could remember their spouse's name. I could remember their kids' names. In some cases, I can remember their, their kids' birthdays or at least the month their birthdays were in. My memory about each of the 150 went through the roof. So, so you don't have to have these mega numbers to get lots of referrals. I, I was getting over 500, 600 referrals with 899 people in my database and 150 uh, person community I called my army of ambassadors. So 150 is the maximum number of relationships a person can maintain, right? So now, so we're gonna build a 150 person community, but it's like, how do you figure out who the 150 are? Well, first yeah. of all, you're gonna put your referral sources in there. You're gonna put your favorite people in there, right? You're gonna put the people who are most likely to uh, refer you or connect you or introduce you, right? So here's the thing is, is to really understand the next step, the seven steps to connecting with connectors. We need to realize that it's not going to take a lot of time to get referrals. That is a myth. The myth is you've got to build relationship over a long period of time to earn referrals. I want you to know, I have seen this executed in a matter of a week. You go from a zero, never met them, to a 10, relationship with someone and you are getting referrals within a week, right? Wow. So it doesn't have to take a long time. So, okay. so what we've got to do is we've got to implement the system, right? So, so the relationship scale goes like this. We've got people we've never met, right? Never mets are zero. That's zero relationship. Now from the branding world and the reputation world, we can say that you may have a limited number of never mets in, in the world, right? Because, because some of them meet you before they meet you by Google or whatever it may be. So, but never met is zero. Now, one through three, this, this level of relationship, one through three is no chemistry. And you know what I'm talking about here. They're just people that you meet with and you just know that you're, you just don't hit it off. It, it's just, you guys don't have any common likes or common interest or, they're really negative and you're really positive. Or in some cases, you're really negative and they're really positive, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we tried, tried to eliminate a majority of those. But the, the one through three is that no chemistry. Now, four is we're starting to get into this cordial and friendly zone. A four is somebody that you can spend like, you know, three minutes with, right? You can have a great conversation. It's, it's pretty good. And, and then you're out, right? A five is somebody that you can spend three hours with, right? You can have a three hour lunch or a three hour conversation and it's awesome. But at the end of three hours, you're like done, I'm out of here. Now the six is somebody that you could spend three days with. You know, you could go a weekend away. Uh, you've got friends that are just really close. You know who they are, right? You, you, you do a weekend, but by the, you know, by the third day, you're ready to, you're ready to go home. You're ready to go away. Now, a seven is a really special relationship. A seven is somebody that you could spend three weeks with. You could go to Italy for three weeks, you and your family, them and their family. You could hang out for three weeks and it would be awesome the whole three weeks. By the end of three weeks, you're ready to go home and your family's ready to, to be on its own. But a seven is a really special relationship. Well, that leads us into the referral zone, which are the really special relationships from a business standpoint. A client is an eight. An eight level relationship is a client, somebody who is entrusting you with their money and finances. Champion is a nine. A champion is somebody who refers you at least one person in your life, right? At least one person. Ambassadors. With You know, the team we took to Dominican Republic, we called them the Georgia Ambassadors. Why? right? Because what is an ambassador? An ambassador is a representative, but so much more than a representative. An ambassador is a representative of goodwill, right? Of good reputation. So an ambassador is somebody who speaks highly of you and refers you often. And I will tell you the reason you're listening to me today is because I've developed a lot of ambassadors. I've developed great relationships with great people who speak highly of me and refer me willingly. Mm -hmm. So the referral zone is the eight, nine, 10 level. So the, the one degree tweak we have to realize here is that we need to go from casual to causal with our relationships. We have, most people's database are 
full of casual relationships, which equals no referrals, zero. Casual relationships lead to no, re what we need to do is become causal. We need to make things happen. We, and the way that we get people in the referral zone is by practicing proactive generosity, by helping them, surprising them with help, with a way that we can help them achieve a goal, help them conquer a challenge, or help them enjoy life more, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to go to, all right, the next step is the lessons from the relationship skill. Number one, referrals happen in the referral zone at the eighth, nine, and 10 level relationships. Okay. <laughs> but we can skip eight. People don't have to be clients. In fact, a past client or old relationship will probably not be your best referral source. And in fact, it's a new relationship who will most likely be the best referral source. So what we need to do is pour into new relationships starting today. And with those relationships, we need to give massive value first. Give them, help them in a big way right off the bat. Something that we need to understand is it's easier to take a zero to a 10, somebody you've never met to a referral source than it is to take a five, somebody you've known for years who you could spend three, hour, or three hours with to attend. It's easier because this person doesn't know any better. We can train this person better, faster. So we need, the lesson is, we need an ambassador development plan. How do we go from zero to 10 with people we've never met? One way to do that, we have 17 different ways to do that, but one way to do that is called the networking play. Today, I'm going to go over the first step of this. The three simple steps of this are visit, meet, host. We need to visit a networking event. We're going to meet that person face-to-face, -face, or we're going to meet four or five people face-to-face. -face. We're going to go to this event, and instead of trying to meet 200, we're going to meet four or five. Those four or five, we're going to get to a one-on-one, -on -one, right? And then from the one-on-one, -on -one, we're going to invite them to our event. So please notice the psychology. We're going, we're meeting slash interviewing, we're inviting them to our community. There is a, a very powerful influence uh, play to this, this networking play. You are going and playing off the influence of others. You are meeting face-to-face, -face, building a great relationship, and actually interviewing them to see if you really want them to be in your group. And then if you want them to be in your community, if you want them to be a referral source for you, you will invite them to an event that you're having. And please notice their community, neutral, your community. So you are taking them from outside your circle to inside your circle. And all I'm going to say is this face-to-face, -face, this one-on-one -on -one is an interview. Visit, meet, host. That is the key. We are going to visit, we're going to meet with them, and then we're going to host. So the three simple strategies to maximize this the first one is the seven steps to connecting with connectors. And this is very easy, right? And this is a main focus for today. And then we'll get into questions and, and go through this with Tristan and, and Kevin. So the seven steps are, are very simple. We're gonna visit, uh, we're planning to visit a networking group or a networking event. And, and honestly, what is a networking event? It could be anything. It could be a chamber of commerce dinner. It could be a networking group like BNI or Master Networks. It could be um, a, an, an agent event. It could, be a, uh, it could be a conference like uh, Mastermind Summit or LCA Live. Those are all networking events, right? Mm -hmm. But the first step, too often we go to these events and we think of ourselves and we say, you know what, if I can just get one great idea, it'll be worth it. Well, when you say get, who is that about, right? That's about you taking. Now, what if we went into these events and our thought was, you know what, I'm not going to worry about getting an idea. If I can just go to this event and find one person to help, if, if I can go to this and just give, how can I give in this? How can I help Tristan and Nick with LCA Live? Instead of thinking, if you know, why should I go to LCA Live? Why, why should I go? Why should I go to the, you know, where's the bonuses? Where's the more stuff, right? What if you were like so thankful for the Lab Code Agents group? and the event that you were just thinking to yourself, I wonder how I can help Tristan at this event. That is the spirit of generosity, and that is a one-degree tweak for your mindset. <clears throat> for this to work, 
you have to go in. There are too many takers in the networking world. There are too many people who go to these networking events and they're like piranha. They're like sharks. They're just going to each person looking for business cards and looking for business and they're trying to sell you, right? That's so annoying, right? Don't be that person. Instead, we're going to go in with the spirit of generosity. Now, you're going to pick an event right now. And let's say the event's next week. It's easy to find these events through Google or friends or whatever it may be. The first step you're going to do, and this happens two weeks or a week before the event, you're going to call the organizer or the leader of the event. So like a membership chair or a president or something like that. And you're going to ask them two questions. Listen, how are the introductions done? At a chamber dinner or a chamber uh, uh, networking event, introductions are done informally. They're done like it's up to you to make the introduction. At a B&I, you actually get to stand up and introduce yourself. It's a very formal introduction. So you want to know how that is done because what you don't want to do is, is get into a formal introduction event and you're not prepared, right? Now, so you're going to learn how introductions are done, and then you're going to ask the organizer or the leader, hey, listen, I'm a, I'm a business leader. I want to maximize my time. I've heard good things about this group. Let me ask you something. Who, who's someone I need to meet? Who, who's, do you have ambassadors for the group? Do you have people that are really connected? Who are the business leaders in the group that I should really meet to get a feel for your group? Right? And, and they're going to give you a couple of names right? And then you go, well, who else, right? Who else kind of fits that bill of, and trust me, the hardest name for them to think of will be the first one. And then they will give you three, four, or five names. Out of the 200 that are going to attend, attend, out of the 200 that are going to attend, you're really interested in only meeting these four or five. One of those people you really want to make sure you meet is the organized leader that you're talking on the phone, right? So, you write down the four or five names that they give you, and of course, the organizer or membership chair's information name. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to research the people that she gave you or he gave you. You're going to Google them. You're going to Facebook them. You're going to get a feel for who they are, what they do. It's just good practice, right? Yep. Now, here's the thing. I personalities. If you are super social and outgoing and prone to being late, this is for you. For the rest of us, we get there 15 to 30 minutes early, no matter who you are. I don't care if you're uh, traditionally late or traditionally on time. The, for the first time you're going to this event, you want to show up 15 to 20 minutes early. Now, you're going to show up 15 to 20 minutes early. You're going to go, and, and just so you know, the tradition is to show up 15 minutes late. What, what many people will do is show up 15 minutes late. Don't be what most people do, but then you'll get... You know, if you are like most people, you'll get what most people have, which is not freaking much, right? So the thing you want to do is not be like most people. So you're going to get there 15 to 20 minutes later or early, and then you are going to introduce yourself to the leader or the organizer or the membership chair and just say, hey, you know, I, I, I called you on the phone or I'm here, a membership chair sent me, and then help. Find a way to help. I mean, you could help with the banners, you could help with the tables, you could help with registration. Help, right? Find a way to help. This does many things, but one thing it does is it gives you something to do, right? The second thing is it gives you something good to do, right? Rather than just being on your phone or playing Plants vs. Zombies, too. <laughs> the third thing it does is what is the leader organizing, think, thinking about you when you show up 15 to 20 minutes later, uh, early, and you are helping, right? So you know what, you know who helpers wanna help? Helpers wanna help helpers. So when you are a helper, you're gonna find that these other helpers want to refer you. They wanna help you. So you're gonna introduce yourself so that they know who you are, and then you're going to help. You're gonna pitch in and help, whatever that may look like, right? Now, when the event starts, the connectors are going to start rolling in. When you see one, dear God, please do not go directly to the connector and introduce yourself. That is a mistake. That is a big mistake. 
What you're going to do instead is you're going to implement the triangle of trust from 7L. And the triangle of trust is simply you're going to find a third party to endorse you in the introduction. So you're going to go find the organizer or the leader, and you're going to say, hey, I noticed that Jim came in. Would you do me a favor and introduce me to Jim? Right? So the organizer is going to walk over to Jim. Jim may be talking to someone, but I've seen this where the organizer actually interrupts the conversation that they're in and says, Jim, I have someone here I really want you to meet. And it is amazing how, like, how good that introduction will be, even though you guys hardly know each other because you got there early and you helped, right? So you have a good conversation with Jim, and then later on you meet Cindy, and then you meet Carol, right? So three out of the five connectors show up. Uh, now you're going to do frog, right? When you meet with them, you're going to do frog, which is family, recreation, occupation, and goals. So you're going to have a conversation about them. You're going to meet the connectors and not talk about your business. You're going to talk about them. And you're going to be very interested. And when you are interested, you're going to discover that the other person becomes very interested in you. You become interesting by being interested. It doesn't work the other way, right? Sure. So in that conversation with Jim, Cindy, and Carol, your goal, yes, you have a goal for each of these conversations. Your goal is to invite each of them to a one-on-one. -on -one. You, you want to meet with these people these connectors, these influencers one-on-one, -on -one, and you want to uh, develop this, uh, this relationship, right? So that is essentially the seven steps to connecting with connectors. Uh, it, it, it's, it's seven steps, so you're like, wow, that's a lot of steps. But what it, you gotta realize, one of them is the spirit of generosity, one of them is showing up 15 to 20 minutes early. So we're talking about things that you're probably gonna do anyway, but the bottom line is these seven, you gotta realize that you are meeting the four or five most influential people handpicked by the organizer. The organizer is introducing you, which instantly puts you at a 10 level relationship, right? You're already, you're, you're, you're already winning. The trust is already there, right? So at the next, at the following uh, next month, I will be going deeper into the meeting, how to maximize your one-on-ones to turn people into ambassadors in one hour. And then also I'm gonna talk at the next one about hosting your events and, and how to have events that people wanna to go to and how to maximize your client appreciation events and your appreciation events. So when you meet at your face-to-face, -face, remember you are gently interviewing them to see if they earn a spot into your community, which is far different than people typically teach you on how to build your database. They, they typically say just add everyone. Well, why not just buy a million person list? Why don't you just do that, right? Yeah. Well, the reason you do that, but don't do that is because you don't wanna waste your time, your energy, effort, money. And instead in this program, you are actually maximizing your time, energy, effort, and money, right? Makes sense. So, so there's a couple of questions, Michael. Yep. Uh, one is, I mean, how would you choose an event if you're like gonna, if you're gonna pick one? Where would you go? So, uh, if I'm gonna pick an event, I'm gonna be very strategic with it. I mean, now, okay. So, is this is this? Uh, I guess, are you new to networking or are you experienced to networking? Brand Might new. be the first. Yeah. Brand so, new. Yeah. So, newer to network, I would I would choose the Chamber of Commerce. I I would go to. They have these evening. Uh, they're called after hours. And that would be one of my first. Now, the chamber is a phenomenal source because the people who are in the chamber are small business owners. Well, from my previous session, we should all know that business owners are the best referral sources, right? So financial planners, CPAs, uh, mortgage professionals, um, uh, I said attorneys, doctors, um, small business owners, entrepreneurs, and, 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 uh, small business owners, entrepreneurs, and salespeople are the best referral sources. So guess what? You're, you're, you already know you're going to the right place if you go to a chamber, of event, a chamber of commerce. And they also have networking events. They have networking groups. And you might think, well, there's 10 agents there. Why? Well, you know what, though? There's 10 agents who are doing what most people are doing, which means they have what most people have, which is not much, right? You're going to go in with a strategy, and, and it is amazing. 
I went to a 25 person networking group that had three agents in it. And within a week, three of the top people in the group were referring me. And the other two agents in the group, one fell off almost immediately, uh, like two weeks after I was there, right? She, she just gave up. The other one had been in the group for 20 years, 20 years. Wow. And, and in one week, I was able to build a relationship to the point of getting referrals from those influencers and connectors. So how'd you do that? I just showed it, right? The seven steps to connecting with connectors. And, and, and I uh, was introduced by the membership chair, which was big. Jeff Yowley was a CPA or is a CPA. And he introduced me to three or four people. And then I took them into a one-on-one -on -one environment. And I, I basically just asked a lot of questions and got to know them very well. And then um, I also discovered that really they didn't have an agent that they were referring to. And when I heard that, what I did is I, I invited them to our event. And we had, you know, I think it was a pie day event that was going on at the time. We do a pie day event where we hand out a couple thousand pies. And they came, uh, we got, I got to know them. And now within a matter of weeks, they are now in my community and they are referring. But the thing is, is how, I mean, the problem with life is we don't typically go around pouring into others all that we can. And why don't we do that? Because you know what? We don't know whether it's going to be reciprocated. We don't know if it's worth our time, energy, or effort, or money to pour into others. But I will tell you that with this system, you know it's worth your time, energy, effort, money to pour into these connectors because they've been hand selected by the membership chair. They're already influential. They're already connected and they are the best referral sources. So why not try to win them over first? Dude, that's totally right. So here's, here's another question. Yeah. Um, with the seven steps, you're talking about getting there early and helping out. Um, I knew that was going to be a problem. <laughs> the getting there early. You mean we got to get there early? Forget this. I mean, the whole system's not going to work for me. It'll never work in my market because I've got to show up early. Do you find, <laughs> do you find that the question is, do you find that people will usually take you up on that? Like, Hey, uh, yeah, we need help. Here's what you can help with. Or do you usually find that, Oh, you know what? We don't need any help, but thank you. Do you insist at that point or what do yes. you do? So you're going to be, you're going to really show them that you want to help. Right. So, so the fact is, is most of the time, especially like a chamber of commerce or a, a large networking group, like, like uh, um, there's a gentleman here in Atlanta who runs a, a 400 person networking event. Are you kidding me? He needs all, Peter needs all, Peter Pasternak is his name. That's he huge. needs all the help he can get. Right. So it, it's one of those where I will tell you as a person who runs hundreds of events a year, you, the the organizer is not going to say no that uh, you, you they always need help and they're going to be appreciative of help and here's the other thing even if they say no we got it jump in and help even if you're the fifth person to help on a four corner banner if you know what i mean yeah right yeah be be helpful find a way to help right you know, even if you're straightening things even if you're moving things just a little bit find ways to tidy up or help that's that's so cool that you say that because first of all this is awesome seven um seven steps for this man but now as I, as i'm reading them through and, and and thinking back that's how i've been able to make a lot of my super close friends that's right and and on both sides like people offering to help me and me offering to help them but i i just never pieced it together like this this is super cool dude I have a yeah. question, uh, Michael. Yeah. I've, uh, so I've, I've been approached by people and I've, I've actually done this too, like at events, if I'm speaking at an event or, you know, um, or somebody else might be speaking at an event and, and finding out, like, let's say through an organizer, finding out who those influencers are, how do you feel about uh, reaching out to them on social media prior to the event? Do you think that's a good idea or is that a bad idea? And just wait for that introduction. <laughs> Yeah. So, so the number one way, and, and I'll, I'll answer your specific question was maybe some generality. Maybe that'll help. It, the, the, the number one way to meet someone 
is through someone they already trust. So, so an introduction is, from a third party is the single best way to get introduced. So, so I've, I've met Jack Canfield. How did I meet Jack Canfield? Well, I knew a gal by the name of Cindy. I, did, I could have went right up to Jack, shook his hand, and had a conversation and said, hey, I'm a best-selling author too, and, and blah, 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 blah. But what I did is Cindy Ertman, who I knew, knew Jack Canfield, I said, Cindy, would you do me a favor? Jack's there. I know he's kind of meeting and greeting right now, but would you mind introducing the two of us because I know you know both of us? Well, guess what? That introduction went really, really well. And to an exchange of books, to an exchange conversation that has led to opportunities that are far bigger than if we would have just met through a meet and greet, right? So here's, here's another question for you then. Um, so you mentioned the seven steps and these are really, this is really, really powerful. And talking about, you know, doing the introduction and having, having an event and, and bringing those people in, inviting them to into your group. That's right. Now, if you have someone that, isn't necessarily within the same industry that you're asking for referrals. Um, what's a good way to stay in contact and maintain that relationship over time? Events. And, and I would say you, you, see, you mentioned something there in there about asking for referrals. And I, I want you to know, I, I know you're kind of uh, newer to this threesome, right? But I, is, I don't believe in asking for referrals whatsoever. I, I was getting over 500, 600 referrals a year, never asked for referrals verbally, right? So I don't believe in asking over the phone or in person uh, for direct referrals. And, and instead, there's a better way, right, which is earning referrals, which and, and I'm not and you didn't say you were asking for referrals. You were just kind of asking the question from the sense of how do we how do we bring people into the fold and keep them uh, maintain that nine ten level. Right. Exactly. And, and events are I mean, for those that know the 7L system, events are the centerpiece of what we do. Right. Uh, appreciation events, not just client appreciation event. We don't call anything we do a client appreciation event. Everything is an appreciation event because there are more than just clients at those events. Um, so events, but but people also say that the 7L system is all about events. Well, that's not true at all, right? Events may be the centerpiece, but the other ways of communicating through phone calls, text messages, uh, handwritten notes, and direct mail and everything else are a part of the bigger picture. Got it. What Great are some question, examples dude. of some good events? So there, that's, I mean, wow. So that is a great question from the aspect of, you know what, I used to teach it the way I did it. I used to teach this is you need to do four board of advisors events for your top 25 every quarter, right? I used to be like, this is the way you're doing it. But what we've discovered, Kevin, is your database is different than mine. Tristan's database is different than mine. And everybody else's database is different than mine. And, and in the next couple of sessions, the next couple of months, I'm going to be going into exactly like how do you pick what type of events to do so that you can maximize the impact to your database, right? So, so the fact is, is for you, for me, it's a board of advisors because you know what? I'm somewhat formal. I'm very business-like and my database are very business-like people, right? But for Tristan, it might be a happy hour. Instead of a board of advisors, he could do a happy hour. For you, Kevin, with being in San Francisco, being in San Clemente, it may be what we call an I love you latte. An I love you latte is you go into a Starbucks and you buy everybody coffee who's already there and then also you invite 25 to 50 of your friends and you buy all of them coffee as well. Jeez. That sounds fun, man. I that like sounds it. like an amazing fun yeah. party right That's there. That's something like people do at bars, you know, like I, I probably do yeah. that. Yeah, it's a lot, it's a lot safer to do it, uh, somewhat <laughs> safer to do it at a Starbucks. But, <laughs> but I love that idea. So have an event, have an event at a Starbucks. Yeah, we call it. Top 25 people and then yep. buy everyone at the Starbucks who was there at the time. A That's right. Of and people are going to go up to you and say, wow, what's this all about? And you're just saying, hey, it's pay it forward on steroids. We're celebrating a great quarter of business. We've, we've had a record setting quarter and we're having a good time. And you know what? I just wanted to share with you. I've also got some friends who come to this Starbucks a lot. So I'm going to buy them coffee too. And, and they're, going to, they're going to say things like, what do you do? And you're going to say, you know what? That's a great question. I appreciate it. But here's the thing. What do you do? 
and you're going to oh. ask them what they do. Damn. And, and they're going to tell you what they do, and they're going to talk about themselves and stuff like that, and they're going to get done with that conversation. They're going to start walking away, and then they're going to, you're going to see them. They literally, like, shake their head, and they go, wait a second. What's that guy do again? And they're <laughs> actually going to go to someone you know to, to ask, what does that guy do? And then that's where your friend goes, oh, that's Kevin. He's the best realtor in the country. <laughs> then I Which get up is, on the counter and start making it rain. Just throw it up. That's, that's right. Woo! That is money, a really money, good money. Money. I like it. Michael, right, that, free flowing. Brilliant, man. <laughs> I, have a, I have another question real quick. What the um, heck, dude? Well, you only get two questions. I'm, I'm going to hit you with some questions, man. These are, this right. is really, really good you info. Know what, Michael, I appreciate your interest. Michael, you're coaching. You're, just, you're coaching Kevin right I'm now. I'm learning right now, man. <laughs> this is the whole purpose here. It's, all good. it's always good to coach the coachable. You know so what I'm look, saying? So here's, I'm, I'm very coachable, by the way. I mean, I, yeah. I believe you have to be at all times, no matter where you're at. Kevin, hold on. Now. Hold your question. Yeah. We've got four questions. I want to really ask this question. Okay, go for it. All right. First, no, Kevin, uh, you ask, Kevin, ask yours. You're on a roll. Right, and then, go, Tristan, go. I'm hanging out. I'll be here for 10 minutes. I've got 10 minutes, and then I've got a jet. So okay. we're good. Well, it'll be real quick. So here's my question regarding networking and being at the events themselves, okay? Yes. So I have 25 people, 50 people, whatever. I, let's say it's 25. So how do, you, how do you, like, navigate through that? There's a lot of people there, right? These are your top people. So what do you, do you have, like, one-on-one -on -one conversations? You get in front of everyone? Like, okay. how do you go about it where it's not awkward and you're not leaving people out? And so you're is not it a networking event or is it your event? Let's say it's your event. Okay. So my event's far different, right? My event is I'm going to have a designated handler, right? So I'm going to have someone who will not allow any conversation to go too long. Most of the time, Kevin, this is my wife. So I will be talking to someone and Sherry will come up and just say, hey, I wanted to make sure that you saw the Coopers. I think they're getting ready to leave, right? So I will gracefully excuse myself, and I will go over to someone else that she introduces me to, right? So, so I won't have – and I will tell you, that, that has been a bigger and bigger problem through the, through the years um, is that we, you know, people do want to have those hour-long conversations. But, but when you have a handler, when you have somebody who's – and sometimes it will be an assistant and my wife, right? So it'll be a couple of people. And, and it's just a graceful way to disengage without being the bad guy, right? Or being the bad girl. Um, she also does that at events. Uh, you know, at, at this mastermind summit, there'll be 1500 to 2000. Tristan saw it, right? I mean, I've spoken at this event for five straight years. I have a great reputation there. A lot of these people are gen gen people. And it could, I mean, I had a line of 75 people deep. What do you do? Right. I mean, so it's how to be graceful and also be respectful at the same time. And I'm, I'm, I'm also hypersensitive. I don't want anybody to feel bad. Right. right. So I'm like, Hey, you know, and, and as they're leaving, right. Or as I'm leaving, Hey, thank you so much. I really, and then, and then off. Right. And if it were up to me, Kevin, I would fail miserably at this. Thank God I've, I've got great people. Right. Well, I've got Sherry really, and, and really an assistant. It's really smart that you have people in place to do that. And it's really funny. I'm going to tell a quick story. And then Trista, I know you have the questions, but so the thing with the, um, the recent marriage of the, the Royal wedding, right? So my wife yeah. was really into that and stuff we were watching. And she, she mentioned something that Queen Elizabeth actually does something that you're talking about, which is she holds her purse, I guess, like in her, in her right hand. And when she's talking to people, when she wants to end the conversation, she changes her purse to her left hand. Yeah. And so people know that they need it. Now it's time to jump in. So even having maybe a, some kind of a signal or something so that people know, let's move on. And you don't, and to maintain that um, level of respect for your guests. So I think that's, that's right. really, really smart that you do that. And I'm going to, I pick, I'm going to pick that. I'm going to use that in my, in my next uh, event. So thanks. For Kevin, that. another thing I do on that, talking about the right and left, that is kind of a, a, a super strategy, if you will. One thing like Tristan says is, is that, you know, we, we had this event like the mastermind summit, I will get a hundred business cards. And in some case, 500, some case, 700 business cards. I have a left pocket and a right pocket in my suit coat, left coat, left pocket, little to no follow up, right pocket, big time follow up. So then when my wife or assistant takes care of my coat, they take the business cards out of the right pocket and we have a follow-up system for the right pocket. The left pocket, they're probably going to go into something that's automated. So, so we have a similar system for, for follow-up from those events. And Kevin, I know you're speaking more and more. 
that's something that that I would probably suggest that you put into place just because it, it's going to happen. I, the, the people that, I mean, they'll run up to you and give you your car and leave, right? Okay, that's a left pocket, right? You, you're also going to get the people like Tristan who come up and, you know, there, there's, it's like, wow, I, this guy's got charisma. There, there's a lot going on here. And, and you know, you, that, that card's probably going to be thrown away. I'm just let's kidding. Go, go just, I was just making, I, 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 TA, you know, I love you. Like, hey, hey, those two things didn't mix. I'm like, Did I, I threw away your card the first time we met. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. So I have to tell you funny. Well, anyway, I can tell you a bunch of funny stories, but I've done it where I could tell somebody has been trained in certain training programs and they come up and they're just like shooting that they're being, you know, they're being aggressive and they give me, I mean, I've, they, I've done it where they give me the card without any con I, I'll throw it on the floor right in front of them. <laughs> I mean, I'll just, I'll just take it and drop it. Wow. And it's just like, if you want a better way, take my card and let's talk later. Well, and the thing that right. you're what well, you're pointing out and we do a lot of, um, prospecting on the phone with our team and we're following up and doing all these things. We use scripts. I mean, you're kind of talking about almost like a script, right? But with mm -hmm. the script, you don't want to sound like you're reading off a script. You don't want to sound mechanical. You don't want to come off as being awkward or weird or anything. You know, right. so it's really about mastering and you know, your, your mannerisms and, and, and remaining natural and authentic yeah. and respecting the other person. And that's really what it's all about. And you build that connection, connection relationship while yeah you know, with this person while you're, you know, you're basically, you know, you want to, you want to kind of build those relationships with as many of those influencers as you can. Right. That's right. What is a script? A script is a plan for what to say. That's all it is. Right. You have a plan for what to say. And so it takes forethought. It takes proactive thought to come up with a script. And it's the same thing here is, is that's our entire seven L system is based on a plan for what to say and a plan for what to do. Right. So, so it's all script. It's all scripted. And, and all of our events are orchestrated, right? It's scripted and orchestrated, but here's the good part. It comes from authentic authenticity, right? It's your script. It's your event. It's the way you would run your business um, through, you know, catalyst, which is our big coaching program over 500 plus now is, is an acronym for create authentic transformation. And that's what we do in our program is we create authentic transformation. We help Kevin not transform to be more like Michael. We help Kevin transform to be more like the ultimate Kevin, right? How do we yep. deliver you to your ultimate Kevin, right? So, so create authentic transformation and launch your success today, which speaks to take action today, right? Create authentic transformation and launch your success today. That's Catalyst. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and the thing yeah. about real quick, last thing on scripts is I look at scripts like um, everybody has a skeleton, right? We all have a skeleton. So script is kind of like a skeleton. We all have a skeleton, but everyone has their own, you know, the way different features, the way they look, sure. some people are tall, some people are skinny, some people are whatever. So sure. you have your own style, you know, that you, you build upon the, the foundation of the, of the seven levels. Right. Yep. hundred percent. So, Kristen, yeah. will you ask your questions? I've got time. We're good. All right. Well, uh, Sherry just texted me. We're good. I got like a crap load, but I'm only going to ask two of them. No, ask them all, baby. Okay, give, <laughs> I, I will give two second answers. I, I'll, I'll, yeah. What is a frog? Uh, is it is a small reptilian creature <laughs> <laughs> known to live in the wettest areas of, of the country. Um, so frog is an acronym for building rapport. You're standing there across from another human being, or you're sitting there across from another human being. Uh, and it's so funny is it's am amazing how often I imagine a frog on the other person's head. And frog is a spin from some people remember Ford, some people remember form. Those are two different things, ways to remember. But frog is actually important because it's family. You're going to ask them about their family. Are you, you know, from around here? Recreation. What do you do for fun? What do you do for hobby? What do you do when you're not doing what you do? And then O is occupation, right? Tons of, you know, how'd you get into? What, what are you most passionate about? What do you love most about what you do? Hey, listen, how's the best way to refer you? And, and listen, how do I even know when I come across all these people in my referral network, who would be the best person to refer you? How would I know them? How can I identify them, right? And then G is for goals. And it is important that the G of frog is the last letter because then you're going to say, what are your goals? 
what are your goals? Well, you've talked about family. You've talked about recreation, hobbies, interests, sports, whatever. You've talked about work. And when you say, what are your goals? They're then going to reference FRO to tell you what's most important in their life. And they, some people will say golf, you know, it's like, tell me about a goal. I want to golf more or I want to golf better. Or they will say, Hey, my family's got a vacation to Greece. I can't wait. That's really exciting. Or they will tell you, listen, we're trying to get 250 sales in a month, whatever it may be. Right. And you can tell a lot about another person by what are your goals? That is a, that is a script as, as right. What are your goals has three outcomes that are awesome. Number one, you now know how to love on the other person. You now know how to help them. When they tell you their goal, you instantly know, it's exactly three o'clock Eastern, by the way. Um, you now know exactly how to help them. Number two, this is a big one. Those who have goals are better referral sources. So if they say something like, well, you know, I don't really do that goal thing, or I don't really set goals then I'm going to gracefully disengage from that conversation. If they say, my goal is to golf more, my goal is to uh, shoot par in golf, shoot scratch, or they say, our family's going to Greece. We have a big family goal of enjoying Greece for seven days. Or they say, we want to do 250 sales in a month. I am going to build that relationship. I now know it's worth it to pour my precious resources, my time, energy, effort, money, into that relationship because they're goal setters. Goal setters are better referral sources. So I want to put the third reason that asking what are your goals is such a powerful question is because of something called question reciprocity. People tend to ask you the last question you ask them. So when I say, what are your goals? And they talk about it. And then I go, Hey, listen, I know this has probably felt like 20 questions. I've asked you a lot of questions. Do you have any questions for me? They are going to say, Michael, what are your goals? And then I'm going to tell them, hey, listen, my weekly referral goal is to give 10 referrals and to receive five high quality referrals every single week. That's my goal. Makes sense, man. Nice. That was a really good answer. Um, are you still a real estate agent? Do you have a team? So team in Kansas City, Kansas City home team. We'd love all your Kansas City referrals. I now live in Atlanta. Uh, sold my team. At least I sold 55% of my team. Uh, and I am, uh, uh, you know, Referco takes all my time. We're, we're helping companies, uh, solopreneur, all the way to Fortune 500 uh, companies get repeat and referral clients. All right. So, and then last yeah. question. There's, there's about seven more, but yeah, let's question. do them. Let's do them. Let's do them. I'm off. What if you're an introvert? Yes, which I am. What can you do? Because, you know, I, I think, all three of us are, believe it or not. Yes. Are yeah. yeah. So I will tell you, I'm an introvert, right? So, so this, my entire system was built for introvert. If you're an extrovert, you're going to blow it out of the water. If you're an introvert, see, that's the thing, right? How many people am I meeting at the 200 person networking event? If, if, so, if an introvert was set, you got to meet all 200, they'll just give up. They'll be on the wall. They, but guess what? I'm going to meet four or five. Now here's the thing meeting four or five for an introvert can be a little intimidating, but guess what? I've got help. I've got the membership chair. I've got the organizer, the leader. They're my buddy. They're my help. So guess what? They will introduce me. So there is no failing. There's no failing. An introvert is just like, I don't want a failed relationship, right? So it's like, there's no failing. You're, you're only going to have successful relationships with this. Here's my, here's my thought on the introvert. Uh, yeah. I think as an introvert, the more you study the the process, the better yes. you'll be, the, the better you'll become at it. There you go. System. You create follow that system, and like Michael's saying is, you know, you you kind of like you the, the found that's the foundation. And then you kind of build on your, you know, based on how the better become the best person, the best version of you, and while using the system as a foundation for what it is that you want to accomplish. And that's right. As an ex for extroverts, I think. It's harder for extroverts to follow the system because we're, you know, kind of like all over the place a little bit. Like you're just kind of out there. Whereas I think with an introvert, um, you really just look at the, you know, you just follow the system and then follow the steps and just think of it as like a process and, and right. then it becomes easier. So, so introvert, extrovert, nobody is an introvert or an extrovert. 
we're all ambiverts, right? We're all ambiverts. We're all some degree of introvert and some degree of extrovert. Here, and, and in some cases, we're extroverted with our family, but introverted with stranger or whatever it may be, right? But here's the thing, right? Mm -hmm. Is that it's all about energy, right? It's about energy. So an extrovert gets energy from people. An introvert gets energy by retreating, by recharging like a battery, right? So, so the thing is, is that this system works for both because here's the thing, an extrovert can go and spin their wheels and use all of that energy on all 200 people. It, great, but it's a limited energy for all the 200 people. They get nothing out of it. What if that extrovert took that energy they were going to expend on 200 people and put it into four or five people? That those four or five people would love on them back, right? So, so for an extrovert, it works really. For an introvert, we have limited energy for social networks. So we need to know how do we best spend that limited energy. Well, the best way to spend limited energy is with four or five people, and then get the heck out. Get them to a one on one where you're more comfortable, and then you can build your build your relationship from there one on one. Yeah, smart. That makes a lot more sense, man. That's I think that's how I started coming out of my my shell too. Yeah. Because I started going to these events because my wife said, you better go. <laughs> you better go to these events. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. Our wives are so good. So good. <laughs> Anyways, Michael, yeah. this was this was really, 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 really good. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, uh, thanks. You always you always bring your A game, man. And we really I was yeah. telling Kevin right before we started, like you're you're one of the only coaches I know who always brings their A game with always prepared and you always have really, really good stuff. So thank yeah, you. I, I learned a lot and this was a really good uh, conversation, Michael. And, and uh, I hope I'm sure a lot of people learned a lot and this was really good information. So thank you very much. Absolutely. I appreciate the opportunity, Tristan. I really do. I, I've had a lot of private messages uh, appreciating that I don't sell right? I don't sell on these. I just kind of explain things and leave the strategy and people who are attracted are going to find me, right? It's just like, I'm just going to keep delivering great content yeah, well, and it's strategies. Easy to find you, man. you go, you know, uh, yeah. You don't type in me. Michael Mayer and the whole freaking, you're like on 20 pages of Google. So. <laughs> well, you know, the best place to bury a body, right? Page Where? two of Google, right? <laughs> 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 Nobody goes to page two. Nobody. So it, it's all good. And Kevin, I appreciate meeting you. I, I, yeah. I hope we get a chance to meet in person IRL someday. And uh, Tristan, thanks so much for the opportunity. I, uh, I appreciate this. We, we've had a lot of fun with this and um, I'm here to help, man. I'm here so, to help. Whatever, one whatever last thing. If I, if I go to one, if I find one of your events and I want to find the influencers, I'm going to go to you as the organizer. You're going to That's connect. Right. Right? That's right. You'll, you'll go to me or you'll go to Mandy. I mean, uh -huh. here's the thing. It's so funny at CRT, which is certified referral trainers, CRT in August, I do have two or three of them who actually implement this on me. And that's the beauty of the, <laughs> but here's the thing, the beauty of the 7L system, which is different than scripts and, and ABC always be closing and all that stuff is that when somebody else does a 7L system strategy to you, you love it. And it's actually what you would want. Right? So it, it, it's like, you know what? I know they're running that strategy, but I love it because you know what? I get it. Whereas mm -hmm. if somebody does feel felt found on you, like a salesperson, you're like, come on, dude, you know, don't, don't, don't try to, you know, don't try to run those scripts. If somebody tries to close me or whatever it may be, it's like quit it. Right. But it's like <laughs> all the seven L system strategies are all built on how you would want other people to treat you. Right. So anyway, right good on. Stuff. Good call guys. Love it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Coach, coach .com. I'm here for you. Thank you, Coach Michael Mayer. Love you, bro. Thanks, guys. Thanks, man.